Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail and I have a video for you from Judge West in Texas and she has a defendant who's a sovereign citizen who has come before her before. She's the gal that came in front of her with the notes in her hand. She had no idea what she was saying. She was just reading off the notes. Well, she's back and she finally sees the light, although it takes a lot of arguing. So I'll let you guys watch. Do you know if they've hired someone? Respectfully, Your Honor, I do not agree um, with your appointed foreign agents considering that the first duty is to the state and will, consider to, will, will be considered conflict of interest. You know. Okay, so if you don't want, the only thing I can do, I'm appointing an attorney to you to help you, right? Um, so if you don't want a court-appointed attorney, then your only option, uh, two things. One is to represent yourself or to hire a lawyer. So if you don't like the way it works, then you do something different. So are you, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Are you either going to represent yourself or are you going to let Mr. Lewis represent you or are you going to hire someone? Objection, Your Honor. Respectfully, is this a court of record? It is a court of record. So your objection is overruled. Okay. Respectfully, Your Honor, uh, where is the verified claim that is being placed against my trust? <clears throat> it's right here. It's called an indictment. And Mr. Lewis has a copy of it and he can show it to you. So that would be the verified claim against you. Okay. Your Honor, your Honor, there were writs that was filed to the case that still haven't been received. Um, I've, I've received your petition for writ of habeas corpus and it's denied. Okay. Respectfully, Your Honor. I demand to be released due to lack of evidence of stated claim and not being given the proper opportunity to obtain proper counsel defective defense. It's overruled. Um, okay. You're running out, aren't you? No, it's fine. So here's the thing, Miss Pugh. I appreciate your position. But listen, Miss Pugh, don't speak over me. Miss Pugh, just because you say respectfully does not mean that you get to interrupt me. That's disrespectful, right? Hang on. Listen, listen to me. Everything you have there is overruled. And here's one of the reasons why is because you have a lawyer. And your lawyer will file the appropriate motion. You're interrupting me again, which is disrespectful. So I'm going to leave Mr. S uh, Lewis as your attorney unless you choose to represent yourself or hire someone else. I'm going to give you two weeks to determine what you're going to do. You can go back. You can go back with the bailiff. Go back. You already said that, and that's overruled. Go back with the bailiff. Get your own attorney or represent yourself if you don't like it. Judge State just gave him access to the court. Right. Perfect. So, Miss Pugh, Mr. Jeffries has been appointed to represent you. Um, he's just been given. He's trying to get caught up real quickly on all the information and the discovery in your case. I'm going to reset your case so that he can get all of that. Once he gets it, he'll be out there to go over it with you, and we'll see if we can get an announcement at the next court date. Right. Um, respectfully, Your Honor, I do not agree to comply with any of your appointed court agents, considering that their first duty is to the state. I understand. We've we've had this conversation before. So if you want to represent yourself, there's some things. Miss Pugh, stop talking over me. If you want to stop talking over me. If you want to represent yourself, then there is a process that we have to go through. And we'll do that today. If that's what you want to do, we'll get your case set for trial and we'll go forward that way. It is highly inadvisable for you to represent yourself. Lawyers have many, many years of training. They understand the law. They understand how a trial works because here's what happens when you're in a trial, 
and you represent yourself, you are expected to know and follow all of the rules of evidence, all the rules of procedure. And so you're really at a disadvantage if you don't know those things. And so what you can, you have to do everything just like the assistant district attorney would. And if you don't, you're going to be in front of a jury and it's going to show, and it's just not going to be, it usually does not work out in your benefit. But I have to go through with you some questions first before we do that. And then if you still want to do that, then there's a couple of things that we, a couple of options, and we'll go over those as well, okay? So um, I am supposed to ask you, I'm going to go through these questions. I need you to answer them if you want to represent yourself, because this is required, all right? So have you ever studied the law? Okay. Um, have you ever represented yourself before in any kind of criminal matter? Okay. Um, do you understand uh, the charges against you? Okay. And so are you, do you know, and we've gone over before, I think, what the range of punishment is if you're found guilty on a jury? Do you know what that is? Let's see. Hold on a second. Let me pull you up here. Let me go over that again as well. Everything's good and slow. So you're charged with a third degree felony offense of injury to a child. Uh, the date of that allegations from June 22nd of 2021. And what that means is if you're found guilty, that the range of punishment um, that the jury could give you is between two years as a minimum punishment up to 10 years in prison, anywhere in between. Do you understand? And the answer out loud, just for the record. Um, do I understand? No, I understand? What do you not understand about that? I don't understand so here's the thing. If you want to represent yourself by law, you have to be able to understand these things. Otherwise, I've got an appointed attorney for you. So you can't just say, I want to represent myself because I don't like the attorney or I don't like the process. Mm -hmm. This is the process that you're in. You live in Texas. You live in the United States. This is the law that applies to your case. So what do you not understand about the range of punishment if you're found guilty? And I'd be glad to explain it. I don't understand because I have no idea what they want. That's what a jury's for, right? And so if you say you're not guilty, then you go in front of a jury and they determine after they listen to the evidence if you're guilty or not. That doesn't have anything to do with if they find you guilty, you understanding that they could send you to prison for between two years and up to 10 years. Do you understand that part? What are you, yes or no? No, you don't understand that. So, Miss Pugh, it's my understanding, I'm not going to allow you to represent yourself because you don't understand the law and the process. So that's, we're on question number four out of 15 that I'm supposed to ask you. So Mr. Jeffries is going to stay on your case. I don't care what you want at this point. You can't do it. All right. You can go back with the bailiff. I'm done. Go back with the bailiff. Go back with the bailiff. Welcome to the criminal appointment list. This is this was not meant to be any kind of punishment, I promise. <laughs> Good morning again. All right, so uh, we're going to go through this, and you're Janetta Pugh, mm -hmm. and will your client waive the formal reading of the indictment? Sure, yeah. So, Ms. Pugh, in cause number 22-39902, the state has elected to proceed on the lesser offense of a Class A misdemeanor assault, and that's from June 22nd of 2021, and how do you plead to that charge? Mm -hmm. And are you pleading guilty freely and voluntarily? Mm -hmm. Nobody forced you to plead guilty, right? Mm -hmm. So I have here on the computer some documents that have your signature on them that the state has marked as exhibit number one. Before you signed those, did you go over them with Miss Holmes? Well, let me stop. Actually, I'm going to go back. So Miss Holmes was your attorney.
before. And then I appointed Mr. Jeffries. Uh, you asked to speak to Ms. Holmes today and you want her to represent you in this plea. Is that correct? Yes. Then on the record, I am going to reappoint Ms. Holmes and I appreciate you um, coming back and taking care of this. So this, um, the documents that I have here on the computer, before you signed them, you went over them with Ms. Holmes yes, and do you understand them? And do you understand if I follow this agreement that you cannot um, appeal, you can't change your mind later and say, I don't want to do this if I follow it today. Do you understand? Yes, State tenders number one. No objection. It's admitted. Any evidence? Ms. Pugh is not competent. No, you're not. All right, Ms. Pugh, I'm going to find that you entered your plea of guilty to the lesser offense of assault freely and voluntarily. Find that you're mentally competent. You understand the nature and the consequences of that plea. Find sufficient evidence to find you guilty. And at this time, find you guilty of the Class A misdemeanor of assault. Sentence you in accordance with that agreement to a term of 30 days in the Jefferson County Jail. You do receive credit on that sentence for the time that you've been in custody. Um, I'm going to hand you a trial court certification. It does show this was an agreement and I followed it. So you can't appeal um, or change your mind. You should have credit on this sentence. It will take a little bit. Ms. Werner's going to get that paperwork done. Once it gets to the jail, you should be released later today. Okay. I appreciate you listening to everyone today and this is obviously much better than you sitting in jail for who knows how long, right? Yes, All right. Take care of yourself. Yes, you I think she could have saved herself quite a bit of time in jail if she just would have allowed them to give her a public defender in the first place. She probably would have been out of jail a month ago or more. I don't know. I can't remember how long she's been in jail. I tried to go back through my videos to see, you know, when I first showed her, but I have so many that I just had a really hard time. I found one, but I don't think that was the first one because that was only March. That was back in March. And I thought she'd been here more than that. But anyway, she finally saw the light and she got out of jail and her case is over with now. She's done. That's all she had to do. So to the sovereign citizens out there, you know, maybe trying to buck against the system is not the best thing, you know, just maybe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.